Touch the leh, that's how you say hello and greet in Tibetan. I hope you liked the little trailer in the beginning of this video. As it's my first ever YouTube vlog, I thought a small trailer would help you know me better and understand the purpose of this video. My name is Dechen Dorker and I'm here to finally share the thoughts that have been there on my mind every day ever since I've managed to get my permanent residency in Canada. I chose to talk about this particular topic because my journey hasn't been easy. There are people out there talking about how easy it was for them to acquire the permanent residency in Canada. Maybe they had the right guidance, experience, education credentials, or maybe some siblings or relatives here in Canada. Or maybe they were just lucky people. But in my case, I didn't have much in my hand when I first decided to come to Canada. I had no work experience, not even a single soul to support me financially, neither professionally. There was nobody in Canada for me. There were a lot of things I didn't know and people in general weren't interested in informing me the details of immigration process, especially the lawyers. They don't give free advices and definitely not the authentic ones. I'm confident that someone out there will benefit from my experience and the lessons that I've learned along the way. It was in June 2014 when I first decided to come to Canada. I was studying for a master's degree in English at Amity University in Noida. Although Amity is one of the most privileged universities in India, I had a burning desire to explore the foreign countries. And for someone like me, who had nobody in Canada to rely on, a student visa seemed the easiest way out. I just had to show my college mark sheets, get an IELTS result, deposit an amount of $10,000 in one of the banks in Canada, show my mother's property papers, and her income tax return summary. I'll leave a link below in the description for you to see the details of getting a student visa to Canada. In the month of December 2014, I received my student visa. Everyone in my family was thrilled and exhilarated for me. I didn't give a toss about the course I was doing in India, the friends I was leaving behind. For me, my life just took a leap. Before I knew it, I landed in Toronto Pearson Airport. Everything was new and exciting for me. My life just transformed. I was in Lambton College, Toronto campus. This time, I enrolled for post-graduation in hospitality management. I had a solid plan. Just wanted to get that diploma, my work permit, and eventually my permanent residency. Toronto is so diverse and highly multicultural that getting a job and an accommodation was a piece of cake. I worked really hard. I went to school for five days during the daytime and worked as a bartender in the evening for seven days a week. That went on for two years until I finally finished my course. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed every fraction of the moment, be it at work or at college. After graduation, almost all my classmates decided to move out of Toronto because getting a work permit in Toronto was easy, but becoming a PR working in Toronto was not a joke. It was really hard for international students. But I was in love with Toronto. Neither I was afraid of the uncertain future, so I decided to stay back. For your information, Government of Canada chooses skilled workers based on their skills and ability to contribute to the nation's economy. Express entry is the fastest way for a foreigner to be taken into consideration by IRCC, Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada. There are three major economic immigration programs under Express Entry. Federal Skilled Workers Program, Federal Skilled Trade Program, and Canadian Experience Class. My option was under CEC, Canadian Experience Class. Did I have any Canadian experience? Technically, no. In order to be an eligible candidate under CEC, I needed work experience in skill level B category jobs. According to NOC, National Occupation Classification, I'll leave a link below in the description for this as well, for you to see. 
In order to be an eligible candidate under CEC, I needed work experience in skill level B category jobs, which was either a line cook or a supervisor or a manager. I did apply, but unfortunately, only line cook job applications were responded. I had no time to waste. My work permit had an expiry date. And that's how I landed at a pathetic, overpressured, underpaid job. Guys, a great writer called Napoleon Hill said, Opinions are the cheapest commodities on earth. And mark my words, cheap can be awfully expensive. I was told that I had to work at one place 30 hours a week for at least a year. I not only bought that random frivolous opinion, I told that to my employer at work as well. I'm not going to disclose his name as I have no intention of degrading or defaming an individual or a race. So this guy, because I told him I had to work at one place for at least a year, he made the most out of my misconception. He expected me to be at work only during the rush hours. So he doesn't have to pay me for the slow hours. I had to work for three hours, clock out, go back home, clock back in after two hours, and be there for the evening rush. Brutal, isn't it? I had to go through this only because I didn't do my own research and listen to a stupid moron. My miseries at work reached to a level that I finally quit without a notice and never went back to that place again. You know, when you're caught up in a monotonous, depressing situation, your brain stopped working. That's exactly what happened to me. Now that I'd quit my job and had more time for myself, I thoroughly looked into the Government of Canada's website. Everything I needed to know was written there. I didn't have to work at one place. I could do two or three different jobs as long as they fell in the same skill level B category. Within few days, I managed to get a job at quite a decent place. This time, my employer was a god. He was a Canadian man, a senior citizen, treated everyone with respect. I'm so fond of him that even today, I never fail to wish him on Christmas. Four months passed by in a blink of an eye. It was hard work, but I was content as I was treated well. But alas, one morning when I reached work, I found our workplace was closed. I was on time, it was not Sunday. What could have happened, right? Confused in dilemma, I called our chef. He picked up and he asked me, you didn't check your email? We couldn't pay our rent on time. We were surrounded by so many corporates that we couldn't thrive. And that's exactly what happened. Our restaurant was individually operated and we couldn't survive, our business failed. I learned a huge lesson that day. Always check your email before going to bed or after waking up. You have no idea how devastated I was at that point of my life. It was like the universe was telling me to go back home. This place doesn't belong to you. I called my mom. I told her, mom, I'm really unhappy and I feel completely helpless. Her instant reply was, come back home. <laughs> Honestly, by that time, I had worked almost for three years, two years as a student and one year after graduation, not completely one year, like around, in, around one year after graduation. So I deserved a break. That was the best decision I ever made, taking the break. I left everything behind and took a flight to India. My mom took me, my younger brother and my aunt for a pilgrimage. It was a full-blown trip on the name of a pilgrimage. Extremely, tremendously exciting, adventurous, and full of blessings. Soon after the trip, I came back to Canada, fulfilled the job requirements I needed for my PR application. Almost everything was done. It was in 2019, CRS scores were dramatically high. I waited for a few more months until I finished two years of experience in skill level B category. So now I have two years of experience. I also scored 8.5 in IELTS 
I was younger as well, so I got points for my age as well. Basically, everything was done, but there was one more problem. Remember that one job I left without a notice? I needed an employment letter from there. I had employment letter from my present job, the previous job, but not the one from where I walked out, like without a notice. Now that I didn't have an employment letter, I needed an affidavit. And for that, I needed a lawyer. Searching for the right lawyer is a losing battle. After scrutinizing a number of lawyers, I finalized one lady. Can't tell you her name, as even she screwed up. At first, she made my affidavit. I was impressed, satisfied with her service. My, got my golden invitation, applied for my permanent residency. And all I had to do was wait. Six months passed by. I didn't hear a thing from immigration. It was a terribly tedious, tiring process for me. Not knowing what was going to happen during my immigration process was a deeply disturbing experience. Thank God, I had a really good friend around the corner. She told me to apply for GCMS Notes. It's a global case management system used by IRCC to process detailed information on immigration citizenship applications. At first, I was not confident, so I, I called that lawyer. She told me, you can't apply for GCMS Notes. And if you insist, I, I charge $100 to apply for GCMS application. I looked up online, I found out GCMS was given for free. It hardly took me five minutes to apply for the notes. So this lady, she wanted $100 for a five minute work. <sighs> After a couple of weeks, I received my GCMS notes. Turns out one of the employment letters didn't have the date of issuance. I fixed it and I uploaded the document in IRCC web form. This website is for those applicants who have submitted, who have made their final submission and need to add on to their files. I was very fortunate to be able to figure it out and fix it before it was too late. In November 2020, I received the most awaited thing, my permanent resident card. I swear, I felt like I won an Oscar. It was the best feeling I had in eons. All those years of struggles and stress was finally paid off. Today, I don't have to do a job just to fulfill my immigration requirements. I do the job I love. I give online training for IELTS exams. Lastly, I would like to leave you with one advice from my personal experience. If you have a burning desire and if you be persistent in your goal with good intentions, no power in the world can stop you from achieving your goals. Please let me know what do you think about this video. What can I bring to you in the next vlog? Write down in the comments below. I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe and share if it did. See you in the next vlog. Bye.